for freedom. How do we do it when funds are limited? We leverage. The kind of leverage that I am referring to is provided by our community being a considerable political force in Canada. The success of the actions that we took during the Orange Revolution is a prime example of the excellent leveraging of our influence. That influence acquired as a result of our political involvement in Canadian politics and that of a representative in Parliament of our community. Just a few months prior to the gathering of protesters on Maidan Nezalezhnosti in Kiev, one might say a comparable but in a different vein, en masse participation in the political process took place in Toronto. Ukrainians of all generation and even some conservatives came out to help in such abundant numbers when federal liberal candidate Boris Jasnesky made his first run for office that he won his seat with the fifth largest majority across Canada of all the liberals elected. This too was noted by the party and among other things giving him the attention from the Prime Minister and access that a rookie MP does not otherwise receive. Consequently, when the Orange Revolution materialized and the call for help came from Ukraine, the community not only responded by raising enough funds to send 500 election observers, but as former Prime Minister Paul Martin recalled last month at a gathering, he telephoned <coughs> Boris Jasnowski, who happened to be on Maidan Nizelesnosti at that time. <coughs> This was the period when the falsified second round of voting results declared Yanukovych the winner of, of the presidential elections, as did Russia. Prime Minister Paul Martin asked, how can I help? Boris responded, Mr. Prime Minister, please have Canada declare right away that it condemns the fraudulent election results and does not recognize those results. As a result, Canada was the first country to do so, based on a unanimously accepted House of Commons motion. The dividends from this leveraging are enormous. The initiatives Boris Jasnowski spearheaded resulted in televised parliamentary emergency debate on the situation in Ukraine at this crucial time, November 24th. It resulted in parliamentarians traveling to Ukraine and expressing their criticism of a stolen election to Canadian and Ukrainian media. It resulted in securing the Government of Canada's commitment to send 500 <coughs> election observers to Ukraine for the third round of voting. Thus, Canada, with other countries, provided a pushback to Russia's pressure thereby creating concern for those in power as to how to proceed. All this international condemnation not only gave the Orange Camp more bargaining power, but needed moral support and courage for the people protesting the denial of their democratic choice. Here is a statement of November 26, 2004, from one of the many expressions of gratitude that were published at that time in Eposhta. I quote, on behalf of Ukrainians now in vigil in the streets of Kiev and other major Ukrainian cities, of Ukrainians supporting those in vigil with prayer, food, shelter, and other material aid, and of Ukrainians doing organizational work from their homes and workplaces, the students of Ukrainian Catholic University thank you, people outside Ukraine for supporting the movement for freedom and democracy in Ukraine in the 21st century. Many of you have joined rallies and vigils in your home countries. Many of you have written letters and signed petitions to your elected leaders. Many of you have simply sent us word of support. Do not underestimate the value of what you have done on behalf of Ukraine's freedom. No matter what form your support has taken, whether big or seemingly small, your support in this time of peaceful but intense struggle has been valuable beyond words. Any struggle for democracy and freedom depends on numbers, upon material resources, and upon organization, but it also depends upon something else, morale. 
Morale is what makes it possible for well-meaning people to mobilize material resources and organizational abilities. Morale is therefore priceless. And yet, while it is priceless, it can be boosted and sustained by even the smallest of gestures. We will never forget. Our continuing activism in the Federal Liberal Party over the last five years and in defending our Ukrainian heritage had placed us in confrontation with Michael Ignatiev, the current leader of the Liberal Party. Nevertheless, our perseverance with a just cause in the political arena, along with an illustration at a meeting with Michael Ignatiev of the organized community that Boris Zhisnowski represents, has resulted in an open letter written three days ago by Michael Ignatiev. As the leader of the Liberal Party, he wrote to Prime Minister Harper, urging him to reconsider his position on only sending 60 election observers to Ukraine for next month's presidential elections. In the letter, he pays due to our organized community by stating, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress and the Canada Ukraine Foundation have also requested closer in number to that sent in 2004 and implored Canada not to abandon its previous commitment to democracy taking root in this part of the world. In the following statement in Ignatius' letter, it is obvious that we have leveraged our political resource on behalf of Ukraine. He writes, the need for election observers and a vote free from improper interference has not diminished. Mr. Davidovich, the former deputy chair of Ukraine's Electoral Commission and the leading expert on Ukrainian democratic electoral development, <clears throat> recently came to Canada to ask the government to match its commitment of 2004." Unquote. And so, what did all this activity by the government of Canada on behalf of Ukraine since 2004 cost us. <clears throat> Some time campaigning to elect Boris Shesnevsky, a few hundred dollars to attend some <coughs> fundraisers of a select number of politicians, responding to calls to action to defend our Ukrainian heritage, writing some letters to the media, blogging on the internet, organizing some demonstrations to protest the abuse of our democratic rights, being informed, reading Iposhka, and caring about <laughs> some causes. In other words, taking our civic responsibilities seriously and being good Canadian citizens. The kind of involvement that is desired in Canada because that is what is required to have a strong democracy. In summary, Ukraine's interests are best served by us building up our strengths in Canada and leveraging them, particularly, although not exclusively, political strengths, in order to help Ukraine realize its necessary goal. Correspondingly, our interests in surviving as a vital Ukrainian community in Canada are best served by an independent and democratic Ukraine whose people have a strong national identity as Ukrainians. This is a symbiotic relationship. In fact, some political forces in Ukraine have started to take responsibility for their part in our mutually dependent relationship. They have started protesting in front of the German embassy in Kiev and the consulate in Lviv. They have called for a boycott of German goods in condemnation of the immorality of John de Minuc's trial. And the Lviv Oblast Rada is preparing an appeal to the President, the Prime Minister, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Parliament of Ukraine, and the President of the Ukrainian World Congress to demand that the political persecution of John de Minuc be stopped. Their defense of a member of the diaspora has come about due to the information and encouragement that was provided to them from the diaspora. And so the symbiosis is playing <coughs> itself out. We but need to guide it astutely 
and thereby support the cause of today's independent Ukraine wisely. It's only to our mutual benefit. As expected, well said and well argued.